Hello health enthusiasts. Today we're going to dive into the world of kettlebells. They are a powerhouse tool that you can add into your fitness regimen and they are so beneficial for spinal health. So today I want to make sure that we break down how to incorporate these exercises effectively and safely. Make sure that you maximize the effort you're putting in and not harming your body when we add this stuff in. So if you're ready to swing into action, let's get started. So kettlebells are super unique. Just the nature of how we use them. We have this kind of, you know, hopefully you've seen a kettlebell, but they have this unique shape and exercises are often used not just to add weight with a kettlebell, but they're, the grip on them, they're used for swinging and moving the, this weight around our body. And this offers such a unique advantage to our core muscles. This is one of the first benefits we want to talk about is how, how effective kettlebells are for strength building, especially in the core. Now, the thing to remember is that your core muscles are not just your abs in the front. Your core muscles are muscles in your low back, around your spine, your mid back, your neck, your uh, glute muscles, your hips, your abdomen, all of those exercises, all of those muscles rather work together to stabilize your spine while other parts of your body move and so when you strengthen your core that's what we should be doing we should be keeping this strong while other parts move and so if you look at exercises like kettlebell swings or Turkish get-ups you have to engage your core while you're swinging or, or you know moving this weight around your body and so that's one of the unique benefits of the kettlebell is its shape and allows you to engage that type of engage your core while moving that weight around your body so super beneficial for strength strength building. Okay, secondly, the unique benefit of kettlebells is that they're not just a lot of exercises that we do. We like bench press, you lay on the bench when nothing moves, you're just moving your arms, uh, you know, bicep curls, same thing. Kettlebells often, a lot of the exercises that we use kettlebells for, we're using movement throughout our body. So windmills, exercises like windmills, like figure eights, these are exercises that require a lot of body movement. And that is so important to incorporate very, you know, almost never in the real world are you lifting something heavy in an isolated focused movement usually your your whole body's having to move and so when we strengthen our core we really want to add uh, mobility in. and then joints need movement to stay healthy and they need movement under load and so exercising that with kettlebells is a is a huge benefit to improving flexibility in our shoulders and our hips etc and improving the mobility of those joints and the third benefit of kettlebell exercises is that they improve posture and this is I think what happens when you incorporate the first two that we talked about strengthening core and improving flexibility is that when we do this regularly naturally this is going to help to support better posture when we get weak when our core gets weak we get stiff we tend to start to kind of shift forward and hunch and you can see this in people all the time now we just really have really kind of scary posture and it's starting younger and younger age and so kettlebell exercises are going to help to fight this decay this degeneration in our posture strengthen our bodies keeping us standing up straight uh, which is super beneficial just for the amount of energy you're spending on keeping your body upright during the day it's super beneficial for the joints in your body and more importantly than that, even your nervous system is benefited when you have normal posture. This prevents subluxations and pinched nerves in your body, a tightening of the spinal cord, and all these things just shorten lifespan and cause a lot of malfunction and disease. Okay, so there are some downsides to kettlebells as well, especially if you've never used kettlebells before. I think a lot of us are really anxious to start adding this stuff in. We get eager and we want to just jump in and start doing this sort of sort of stuff, adding kettlebell exercises in. The, the problem is, is that there are some downsides to this. There are some risks to this. So not using using proper form is or, or bad technique is a real problem and can lead to injury of the spine again a lot of our cores are not as strong as we think that they are you might be able to do 100 crunches but getting out and doing some kettlebell swings where there's actually some movement happening in your body we might overdo it and we don't want to injure our body as we're trying to get it stronger and so my best advice with this is make sure that if you're going to incorporate exercises in as I've talked about kettlebell swings I've talked about Turkish get-ups I've talked about uh, windmills I've talked about figure eights I'm going to go over some more of my favorite kettlebell exercises but it is really important that we actually watch I think YouTube videos or we even have a personal trainer or instructor who can help look at us to make sure that we're doing these exercises right it's just crucial that we don't hurt ourselves as we're trying to get ourselves healthier so again start slow with this you want to work your way up but let's avoid the the bad technique that I see far too often when people start with kettlebells kind of in line with that is overexertion. So we might have bad technique. The other problem is that we actually often tend to use too much weight. It really does not take a lot of weight with kettlebells. You know, where a lot of us are maybe used to, you know, curling 40 pounds. Well, a 40 pound kettlebell, when you're swinging it, that's a recipe for disaster if your body's not ready. So we just don't want to make sure that we're using too much weight to start, especially as we get this weight way out in front of us. There's a lot of momentum that creates. And it, again, it's, a, it's another thing that can hurt ourselves and can cause a risk is if we're using too 
much weight to start, start light. And lastly, and I can talk about this from personal experience, if you have a pre-existing condition, a disc injury in the low back, a spondylolisthesis, osteoarthritis, degeneration in the spine, pulled muscles, etc., you don't want to just jump into kettlebell exercises without consulting, you know, a professional to make sure that you're doing this correctly. This can f- exacerbate a lot of those conditions. So I, I'm a big fan of kettlebell exercises, but I want to make sure that we're starting this without, you know, setting ourselves up for disaster again with poor technique, using too much weight, or starting this maybe before we need to do something simpler to strengthen our core and get some mobility in our body. So this, I think kettlebells are a little bit more of an advanced technique, not a beginning technique. So you should be able to, you know, make sure that you're doing a lot of other things, dead bugs, planks, all this other stuff. You should be able to do that without pain before we start to add kettlebell exercises in. So my favorite three kettlebell exercises to add in are number one, kettlebell swings. Now this is a very simple exercise. You're really holding the kettlebell and you're using your glute muscles. You're not lifting with your arms. There is a variation where you do lift with your arms. And I'm not going to instruct you how to do it here necessarily. There's other YouTube videos for that. Uh, but that is this is a super good exercise for working on our low back strengthening. It's a, it's a hip hinge. It's a glute contraction as we're making this quick motion. And that type of exercise is so good to strengthen the low back. It's really good for the discs in the low back, really good for the muscles that surround the spine. So it is my number one favorite kettlebell exercise. Number two are called halos. Halos are an exercise that are a core strengthening exercise. You're going to hold the kettlebell or you can, you don't necessarily have to do this with a kettlebell. It can be a dumbbell. It can be a medicine ball. It can be a plate. And you're going to start it down by one hip and slowly keeping your core contracted. You're going to move that across to your shoulder, around your head, over the other shoulder, and down to the opposite hip. And then you twist back up. Boom. We keep rocking back and forth. Um, I love this exercise. That is my this is my favorite core strengthening exercises. There's twisting in there. There's stabilization in there. All the good stuff to help strengthen that core. And lastly, our heartbeat goblet squats. Again, this is the easiest to do with a kettlebell, but again, you don't have to have a kettlebell for this exercise. Pretty hard to do a kettlebell swing without a kettlebell. You can kind of use a dumbbell, but just the way the kettlebells are built, that's the best for the kettlebell swings. But for these other two, like I said, the halos, you can use a different weight or the goblet squat you can use a dumbbell as well but you're going to hold that weight in front of you the kettlebell in front of you and you're going to do a nice proper squat now i'm not going to get out of the camera here but when you get down to the bottom you're going to pull the weight forward and then back and then you're going to stand up and that is such a when you get down in that squat position you push that weight out in front of you and then back it forces you to engage not just your ab muscles but those core muscles in the back that we talked about super beneficial for strengthening what's happening back there most of our back pain is due to weak core muscles that if people had stronger cores we would not have nearly the amount of back pain that we do yes we sit too much yes our neck posture affects all this sort of stuff but if we strengthened our back we could resist a lot of that stress down there and those exercises are some of the best that you can do to help strengthen that low back strengthen that core and reduce back problems. So I hope you learned that kettlebells are just a really beneficial thing that you can do for, there's a lot of benefits to a whole body. They're good for shoulders, they're good for your core muscles, they're good for your legs. A lot of exercises you can do with them. You got to make sure that you do it properly, that you progress properly, start lightweight and then add your body in and don't start if you're hurting or your body's talking to you. Don't work through pain. Work to pain, not through pain. Anyway, I hope this video was beneficial for you and I really encourage you to start adding this stuff in. If you're at that level, start to add these exercises in. I guarantee you're going to notice some really profound changes in your spinal health and your, your strength in your body. And that's only going to benefit your longevity, your nervous system, all this, all the good stuff that we're, that we're trying to deal with here. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Make sure you follow us on our social channels for more videos. You can visit our website. Our blog is full of all this sort of information to help you live a longer, healthier, happier life. I'm Dr. Jeff, Discover Chiropractic Chaska, Minnesota. Have a good one.